Yep. All right, we're on Mem Ahay Amud Aleph. Does that sound like a good place to start? Okay. All right, remember we were dealing with this issue of that Rabbi Eliezer said that the person who went beyond the tomb only had an option of walking back to Amos. Okay? That's what he would he would say. That was his position. Okay? And that's what the Gemara started off with minding us at the top of the Amun. Lahatanan Rabbi Eliezer Meshtayam Yikanes. With two Amos, he was able to go back into, re-enter a few. Okay? Shlosha lo Yikanes. With three, he cannot re-enter. Right? My love, is it not in the following? Rabbi Eliezer Latame, that Rabbi Eliezer is following his own opinion. The Amar, the Huba Emtsaan. And he's saying, because the person, okay, is really in the middle of his, let's call it space. And his Dalit Amos is really two in one direction, two in the other, right? The Arba Amod, the Ahavule Rabbanan, which we touched on briefly yesterday, and that the Dalit Amos that the rabbis give this person, Kiman de in Dame, okay, that they are very much, okay, uh, overlapping, right? And when they say that he's able to enter, okay, Alma Havla Atchumim Miltehi, and we say there, that therefore this idea of overlapping domains is a is a valid principle. Okay, that's where we stopped yesterday. Okay, now Amarle Rabba Bar Barchana La Baye. So Rabba Bar Barchana Na is challenging Abaye and saying, "When we the Rabbi Eliezer, Kamataf Le Lamar, you're saying you use the example of Rabbi Eliezer's proof." as a challenge to our teacher, to Rabba, okay? Is that what you did? So he answers him, Amar leisit abayim. And yes, the shami ali minei demar, because I heard it directly, he says, from our master. Ad kan lo pliye rabbanan ale de rabbi Eliezer. Up to this point, the rabbis did not disagree with rabbi Eliezer. Only in regards to something that was, call it a non-mitzvah, right? right? A permissive, uh, general activity. But in regards to the situation of a mitzvah, okay, they agreed with him. Uh, they agreed with him. So now the Gemara picks up and now discusses the new part of the Mishnah. Where it's said that anyone who went out for a rescue, okay, can go back to their place. And we said the problem was going to be, how do we understand back to their place? Okay. And even more, asks the Gemara, so what happens if the person went uh, considerably more than their 2,000 Dhamma? Right? Can they really go back? Today at 10 a.m. there is a board Zoom meeting. Again, today at 10 a.m. there is a board Zoom meeting. The ID number is 8410647315. Again, the ID number is 8410 oh, Ted, I don't know. It's mute. But I feel it to even more. So if it's more than 2,000, Amar, Baha, 
Amart Resha Apayamama, the two law. Okay, so he says, but didn't you imply that in the first part of the Mishnah it says 2,000 Amma and no more? Amar Rav Yehuda, says Amar Rav Yehuda in the name of Rav, Shechazrin Beklei Zayin Lamekoman. He is giving an attempted explanation that they may return with their weapons to their place. Umay Kusha, what's the question here? Dilma Lahatzil Shani. Maybe because it's a situation of rescuing, of helping, of saving, it's different. Ela ikasha, hakasha. But if there's a problem, this is the problem. Ha, it's not because it was taught elsewhere in another Mishnah. The Rishona, lo hayu zazin misham kol hayom kulo. Okay? That initially they could not leave that place if they were beyond <coughs> one's kum the entire day. It kin rabban gamliel. Okay, this is Rabban Gamliel, Hazakim. Sheyesh lahen apayim ama lekol ruach. So the implication is, if they came to Jerusalem to testify about they saw the new moon, right, in order to declare the month. But once they got to Jerusalem, if they were permitted for that mitzvah, they were permitted to travel beyond their tchum. But once they got to Jerusalem, they had this, so to speak, stay where they were. So Rabbi Gamliel made a takana, right? That said that they would be able to travel within 2,000 ama of the city in any direction. Velo elu bilvad amru, and not these only. Ela afilu chachama, haba'a even if it's a midwife. Who comes to help give birth? The Habala Hatsiyum and Hagayas, or a group that comes, or someone who comes to help save a person from enemy troops. Umina Nahar, or to save someone from a river. Umina Mapolet, or to save someone from a um, uh, crash, you know, a falling debris, right? Umina Hadleka. Or to save someone from a fire. They are to be considered like the people of that city. And they would have 2,000 ama in that city, the whole ruach, in every direction. The two lo ask the Gemara and no more. Okay. But didn't you say, Kol Hayotzin Lahatzil? That's what our Mishnah said, that they can return to their place. And that would seem to imply even more than 2,000. Amar Rav Yehuda, Amar Rav. Okay, so now we get another attempted explanation. He said that they return with their weapons, the Mekoman, to their place. Why? Kedetanya, as taught elsewhere in a brighter. Be shona originally, ayumanichin kle zainan bevetai samuch lechoma, that they would leave their weapons, okay, in a house by the, let's say, walls of the city on their way out, okay, and then they would go beyond the city. Pamechat, one time, Ekiru Bahen Oivim, their enemies recognized. Virad Fuachrehim, and they ran after them. The enemies attacked them. Vinichnesu Vitol Kle Zainan, and they went into the house to collect their weapons. Vinichnesu Oivim Achrehem, and the enemy ran in after them. Dachku Ze et Ze, Vahargu Ze et Ze, Yotermi Masha Hargu Oivim. And as a result of the chaos, okay, the Jewish soldiers uh, pushed each other and wound up killing more the, of their own people than what the enemy had killed. Friendly fire. Okay. Ba'otasha'a it kino. At that same time, the rabbis made a takana, 
שיהיו חוזרים למקומן בכלי זיינן, that they could go back to their places carrying their, being their weapons. Now, Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak Amar lo kasha. Okay? Rav Nachman says there's no problem with this takana. What's the difference? Kan shenitzchu Yisrael et umot ha'alam. In one case, it's when the Israelites, Jews, were victorious over the other nations. Kan shenitzchu umot ha'alam et atzman. And the other is when the other nations were victorious, really, over the Jews. Now, a new explanation based on this discussion. Amar Rav Yehuda Amar Rav. This is Rav Yehuda in the name of Rav. Nochrim shetzaru al ayarot. Okay, we're getting now to a situation where since we dealt with this issue of warfare, okay, what about other issues perhaps of warfare dealing with Shabbat? Okay. So the Gemara now proceeds in this direction. It says Rav Yehuda in the name of Lav. Nochrim shetzaru al ayarot Yisrael. You have Gentiles who laid siege to Jewish cities. Okay. We are not permitted to go outside of the city walls, in other words, beyond the tchum, with the weapons. And they were not originally permitted to desecrate the Shabbat. And the Brayta teaches the same thing. Gentiles that laid siege to Jewish cities. What are we talking about? When their siege was based on their attempt to gain funds, okay, for monetary purposes. But if they laid siege to the Jewish cities for the purposes of human lives, in other words, they uh, wanted uh, to... Uh, rape the women, kill them, uh, men, women, and children, um, things like that. Yotzin alehen beklei zenan. It's permissible to go out with their weapons. Umechalilin alehen at the Shabbat, and to desecrate the Shabbat. Now the bright goes on. Uba'ir hasmucha lesafah, and regarding a city that is close to the border, <laughs> even if they did not come in regarding issues of human life, <laughs> but even such a minor issue as uh, as the straw, okay, and uh, right things like that, okay. In other words, small. Monetary issues. Yot in alehen beklizainan, they may go out with their weapons. Umechalalin alehen at the Shabbat, and what they may desecrate the Shabbat. In other words, for those, an attack, a siege on those cities on the border. Amar Rav Yosef bar Minyome, and Rav Yosef bar Minyome says Amar Rav Nachman in the name of Rav Nachman. And the Jewish community of Babylonia is similar to a, a town, a city on the border. Okay. On what basis? And they interpreted this in regards to the city of Nahardea. Nahardea was, remember, a major Jewish city, right on the river, okay, and, but it was also on the border, okay, between the Babylonians and the Persians, and so therefore it was a uh, key uh, fighting area, okay, but it was also the, the way into 
the major Jewish settlements in that central part of the of the country. So now, Darash Rabbi Dustai, the Min Biri. So Rabbi Dustai gave a uh, sermon, a drasha, from the following. My dichti. What do we mean when we say the following pasuk? The Agidu le David le Mor hine plishtim milchamim bekeila vehema shosim et hagrano. Okay, citing this uh, pasuk. Okay, that uh, was talking about the Philistines coming and attacking the uh, grain uh, silos in the city of Keila. Right? What are they? Uh, what were they really referring about? War against Kila and pillaging the threshing floors. Right? Tana Kila ir hasmucha lesapar haita. It was taught that Kila was a city on the border. Vehem lo ba'u ela al iskei teven v'kash. And yet we say that they only came the Philistines on regards is the topics of uh, grain. In other words, minor financial issues. Dichtiv, because it's written, vehema shosin et hagrano, because the Pasuk says, again, that they were pillaging the, the grain floors. Uktiv, right? but immediately afterwards, it's written, Vayishal David Bashem Limor, Ha'alech Vihi Keti Peplishtim, Ha'ele, Vayomer Hashem El David, Lech Vihi Kita Peplishtim, Vahoshata et Keila. So immediately afterwards, though, David asks Hashem, <coughs> Should I go and attack the Philistines? And Hashem responds, Attack them and save the city of Keila. Right? So what was the issue? What was bothering him? Notice what made David ask Hashem what to do? After all, says the Gemara, if we think, <coughs> sorry, that David was asking for permission, was it permissible or forbidden for him to do so? There was an existing Sanhedrin, an existing bar, uh, Beitin of Shmuel that he could have gone to. That court, okay, was the court in that day, and it could have uh, rendered a decision. But rather, David was asking if he were going to be successful or unsuccessful. Daikanami, and we can determine this from the language, right? How? Dichtiv, because it says, Leich vehikita beplishtim vehoshata et keila. Go and save, and you will save, okay, you'll strike the Philistines, and you will save the city of Kehila. Shmamina. Indeed, that's what we learn from this point of David's uh, question, his inquiry. Okay, a new Mishnah. Okay. Let's talk again. We saw we had to deal with questions about somebody traveling. And that's where the Mishnah is now taking us. Okay. Mishi Yashar Badera. Somebody is a traveler and he goes to rest on the journey while he's on his trip. What happens? And he either went, took a nap or he didn't take a nap. He just went to put down his load, but he gets up again and he sees there's a city close by. Okay. Since intent, Okay, before the Sabbath, right? He had not mentally intended to get to that city to make it his Sabbath residence. Lo yikanes, says the Mishnah. 
he is not permitted to enter that city, right? What happened, right? Right, because Amen. he could not walk past his tomb, all right, to get to that city. Divre Rabbi Meir. That's the view of Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Yehuda Meir. Rabbi Yehuda, however, says, Ikanais. According to Rabbi Yehuda, he may enter the city. Not only may he enter the city, but once he's in the city, he becomes like a citizen of the city and gets their tchum. Ma'asehaya, there was an incident. V'nichnas Rabbi Tarfon below Mitkavim. And a situation occurred that Rabbi Tarfon entered a city, okay, without making it in advance his intention, okay, his expressed desire for that be his Shabbos um, resident, right? Now the Gemara is going to deal with all of this. Tanya, okay? <coughs> says a bright Amar Rabbi Yehuda. Says Rabbi Yehuda Ma'asebu Rabbi Tafon. There was an incident with Rabbi Tafon. Shahaya Ma'alech B'derech. Okay? That he was traveling on the road. V'chashpla lo. And it became dark. Right? Erev Shabbat. V'lan chutz ma'ir. Okay? And he stayed outside he slept at night outside the city. The shacharit, the next morning. Matzauhu ro'e bakar. He was found by a number of cattle herders. Amrulo, and they said to him, Rebbe, harei ha'ir lefanecha. He kanes. The city is in front of you. Go in. Right. What happened? Nichnas. He went in. V'yashab v'vet ha'midrash and went into the base midrash. V'darash ko hayom kulo. And he stayed there the entire rest of the day and uh, gave sermons, right? Amrulo. So the question in the bright to them is challenge, the incident. They said to, to uh, Rabbi Yehuda, Misham Raya, Shema Bili Bohaita. He used that as an example, all right? Perhaps he may not have verbalized, <coughs> okay, but maybe in his heart, in others, his initial intent, physical, mentally, right, was to be at that city. Oh, or perhaps, Beit HaMidrash, Muvla Betoch Tuchumom Haya, or perhaps in the 2000 Amma, from where he had stayed, the Beit Midrash was located, <coughs> excuse me, and he could reach it. So we can't use that as a, an example to justify, all right, to give a different view than what the Midra, Mishnah is saying. Let's go on with the new Mishnah. Mishi Yashan So we saw before what happened that uh, a traveler stopped on the way. But let's say he stopped and he went to sleep, right? So now what happens? Right? And he didn't know while it was asleep that it got dark, right? And became Shabbat. And therefore, Yesh lo apayim ama, the call ruach divrei rabbi yochanan ben nukur. That he has, at that point, 2,000 ama, okay? as his Shabbos Tukum. Now, if we just said before, get that, that there was, the question was, was there intent to designate the lo a location as a, in terms of Tukum? Perhaps not necessarily verbally, but at least mentally. What about when the person's asleep? But the sages say, Ain lo ela arba amot. According to the sages, he only has dalit amot. And not 2,000 amot like Rabbi Yehud. Rabbi Yehazar omer, vahu be'em sa'an. Rabbi Yehazar says, well, maybe we'll take it that he's in the middle. So he doesn't have 4,000 amot to get 
Right? He only has 2,000 in one direction or the other. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Le'ezer Ruch Sheyitzah, Me'lech, to whichever direction, okay, he can go. Umode Rabbi Yehuda, and Rabbi Yehuda then acknowledges that She'im Be'rerlo, that if he clarified it, She'eno Yachol Lachizor Bo, that therefore he cannot recant on it, right? That he can't choose a different direction. Now, Hayushnayim, let's say we have a situation of two people, right? And they are restricted to, according to Rabbi Eliezer, right? Or according at least to the rabbis, Dalit Amos. Mekzat Amotav Shelzer, some of the Arba Dalit Amos of one is overlapping with some of the Dalit Amos of the other. Okay? So think of, uh, I'm thinking of like circles. Okay? And you have a common area in between. All right? Overlapping area in between. Okay. They can each move to the middle and uh, join and eat there together. So long as one doesn't bring from, so to speak, I'll call the far end of his tchum into the further end of his neighbor's home, right? Look at diagram opposite on 455B1, opposite note three. And you can see there, okay, uh, art scrolls attempt to show that person A has Dalit Amos, person C has Dalit Amos, but they have in common two Amos, Okay, where in the middle would be B. Okay. So, now what happens, says the Gemara? Hayush Shah. Let's say there were three in the Mishnah. says three people. Vaha'em sa'i muvla b'nehem. And the one is in between, is overlapped and included among them. Hu mutar imahem. He is permitted with them. Vahem. Mutarin Imo. And they, right, the two outer guys are permitted to be with him. But the two outer guys, Asurin Ze they are forbidden one to another. Right? Yeah. Looking at an example, right? Um Art school really didn't give another diagram. No. Okay, to show this. But again, think of it as uh, overlapping tchumi. Okay, that the guy in the middle has two on this side, two on one side, and the two on one side can go to the an outer guy, okay, I see, and the two on one side can go to an earlier guy, A. Right. So, what happens from this example? Rabbi Shimon is now going to draw for us a further um, uh, learning, further effort to try to derive something, and that will be our uh, the example that's given in the diagram in the picture with note six on 45b1. Okay. Amar Rabbi Shimon, the Mahadavar Dome. What is this uh, example of uh, three with overlapping sections? Okay. So in other words, A can go into B, a C can go into B, and then they could be together. Or A and B can be together, or B and C 
have a common area that they can be together. But A cannot join with C. Okay? He compares it to the following. Le shalosh wrote to three courtyards, haptuchot zolazo, and each courtyard uh, has an opening one to the other. So you can see in the picture in, in six, note six, that but there are two houses, right? Two buildings in a courtyard. <coughs> then there's a wall, but there's an opening to the next one. And likewise, at, at the other end. So you still have the three with openings access one to the other, okay? But they also have access out to the Rishusarabi. And that's what is coming next. So the three courtyards, Ptuchot Zolazo, not only that, Uptuchot the Rishusarabi, and they also have openings to the public domain. What happens? Okay. Here we see as follows. Evu shtayim im ha'emtsa'it. The two people, people that are living in the two outer courtyards, okay, can make an eru with those living in the middle courtyard. Himu teret imahem. Okay, so the middle one is permitted with them. Vehen muta wrote ima. And they are permitted with him or with it, with her. Okay? Ushtayam hachitsanot asurot zo imzo. And the two outer, let's say, communities, all right, the two outer, all right, the buildings in, uh, in uh, courtyard A and the buildings in courtyard C, they are forbidden one to another. Now, going on in the Gemara. By Rav. So Rava asked the following. Okay. Going back to our beginning Mishnah. It said, okay, that according to Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri, if the person fell asleep, they could still have 2,000 Amma for their Tchum. Okay. Which would seem to imply one does not necessarily, not only not need to make a verbal declaration of tchum, but one would also, as if no a clear mental declaration of, okay, the Zoom was necessary. So the Kumara therefore is going to ask a question, comparing the sleeping person to basically Kaylee, okay? My Kasava Rabbi Yochanan Ben Nuri. What is the opinion of Rabbi Yochanan Ben Nuri? Misavar Kasavan. Is it possible that he thinks as follows? Hefze Hefke. Okay. Property that is ownerless. Koim Shvita is capable of acquiring a Sabbath residence. Ubadinhu. And this seems logical. The Liflag the Kaling, okay? Because we can make a distinction with regards to utensil. Vaha the Kamifla gave Baada, okay? And the fact that we might disagree and make a distinction with a person, Lahodi Acha Kochan the Rabbanan, is to show us the strength of the opinion of the rabbis, of the sages, namely, <clears throat> because even though it's possible to say <inaudible> that the person will wake up and therefore once they're awake, kana, <inaudible> they're able to acquire uh, the property and therefore uh, that property becomes part of their tchum, in their tchum. Yashen and Amikana. Then maybe we should say the same applies if the person is sleeping. Right? Kamashmala comes to teach us below that that's not the case. Odilma, or perhaps, 
Kasaba Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri, that Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri is of the opinion, Ba'alma Chavtse Hefker, Ein Konin Shvita, that in general, ownerless property, <coughs> excuse me, is not able to acquire a Sabbath residence. Vahacha, and in this case, Haini Tama, Il Or. But here, the situation, the reason that that one could acquire that property was because he would awaken Kana, and therefore he acquires it. Yashenam Kana. If that's the case, maybe he thinks then also, even when the person is sleeping, he could still acquire that. Amar Rav Yosef. Responds Rav Yosef. Tashma. Listen to the following brightly. Okay? As an attempt to answer the view of what Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri holds. Sure. Following Brighton deals with rainwater. Gasharmim shiyardu me'er of Yomto. The rainwater fell on the eve of Yomto. Yesh lehen alpayim ama kol ruach. If that's the case, according to the Brighton, anyone collecting that rainwater may on Yom Tov, carry it up to 2,000 Amma in any direction. Beyom Tov, okay, if they collected it, however, on Yom Tov, they are like the feet of any person. In other words, the amount that they can walk, carry of that rainwater is equal to whatever the status of that person is in terms of their tchum. I amart b'shlema kasava Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri chafzei hefker konen shvita. If you're going to say it's acceptable to say that the opinion of Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri is that ownerless property is able to acquire the Shabbos residence, hamani, according to whom is it? Rabbi Yochanan, he. Maybe according to Rabbi Yochanan. Ella, I amart, chafze, hefker, ein konin shvita, hamani. But if you say that ownerless property is not able to acquire the Sabbath residence, according to whom is it? Lo Rabbi Yochanan, velo Rabbanan that it's neither according to Rabbi Yochanan nor according to the rabbi. Now, what happens? Yati v'abai v'ka'amar la lahashma'ata. Abai was sitting and he was learning, reviewing this particular lesson. Okay? Remember they would review out loud. Right? And so what happens? Amar le rav safra l'abai. Rav Safra hears him learning out loud, okay, and he says to him, Vidilma, perhaps, Bikshamim Hasmuchim Laeraskim. We're talking about rain that fell close to the city. Va'anshe o Tahair, Da'atam Alayhu. And the people's intent when they saw the rain was to be able to include it as part of their area <clears throat> within their tchum. Amarle, so he responded to him Abai, Lo Salkadata, don't even consider that, he said. Ditznan, because we learned elsewhere in another Mishnah, Bor Shayachid, if we have a system that is owned by an individual, Kiragle Yachid, Right? that uh, one can only carry the water from that cistern to the status of what the tchum is of the individual. And if you have a cistern that's owned by the, the city, the water can be carried from that cistern, okay, as is the tchum of that entire city. Vishel Ole Bavel, 
And if the cistern was, let's say, along the roadway, and it was one designated for those pilgrims who would come on the three pilgrimages festivals, right? From Bavel, Kiragwe, Hamimale, there it's only designated on Yom, on the Shabbat, let's say, okay, to be equivalent to the status of the person who fills the uh, a container with the water from that from that the system. Now, Gemara picks up the Tanya, and then we learn as well the following: Bor Shashvatim, a cistern that belonged to the tribes, Yesh Lehen Alpayim Amalakol Ruach. They had two thousand Amma, right, in each direction. So what happens? We have this Brighta and we have this Mishnah, Kashin Ha'adane. The two of them conflict. But rather, don't we learn from this? Ha Rabbi Yochanan Ben Nuri, Ha One might be the view of Rabbi Yochanan Ben Nuri, and one might be the view of the rabbis. Namely, that if we say that they, uh, right, that they have two thousand ama, that would be the the view of Rabbi the Bright. That would be the view of Rabbi Yochanan ben Rui. Okay. Now the Gemara said, "Ki ata lekame the Rav Yosef when he came before your Rav Yosef, Abaye, telling Rav Yosef what happened, Amar lehachi ka Amar Rav Safra." This is what Rav Safra said to me. Vahachi ahadarele. And this is how I answered him. So Rav Yosef now says to Abaye, Amarle, he says to him, Va'am I lo tema le migufa. Why didn't you answer him from the text itself? Namely, Isal gada'atach ishamim hasmuchin la'ir. Askinah. If you think we're talking about rain that fell close to the city, that's what we're dealing with. <laughs> On what basis do we say that they have 2,000 ama in every direction? <laughs> Here, we should have said that they were like the amount of status of the people of that city. That's what it should have said. Now, Amar Ma, now we go back to look at what he said. Right? Earlier, the master said, Biyom Tov, Harei Hein Ki Ko Adam. That on Yom Tov, collecting that water and carrying it on Yom Tov would be like the measurement of any of the person. The Amai, on what basis? Likne Shvita Baokianis. Maybe we should say that that rainwater actually established its Shabbos residence in the ocean. Okay? Where it came from. Lema, the Loka Rabbi Eliezer. And we're not going to, and you can say that it can't be according to Rabbi Eliezer. The Ika Rabbi Eliezer, because if it were according to Rabbi Eliezer, Ha'amar Kol Ha'olam Kulo Mime Okeanus Hushote, who says that the entire world draws its water sources from the great ocean, right? Namely, Amar Rav Yitzcha says Rav Yitzcha, Acha Ba'avin Shemit Kashru. Yom Tov Yitzchak disagrees. He says, no, that rainwater came from clouds that had gathered already on the eve of Yom Tov. Yeah. So Gemara says, V'dil Mahanach Azle. Well, perhaps, even if you agree with Rav Yitzchak's state explanation, maybe those clouds moved 
And these are other clouds. The Eid Laho Simana Okay? And these uh, have a different, uh, right? They're different clouds. Okay, they have a different form, a different uh, formation. The Ibayat Ema. And if you want, I could say it this way. Have suffek the debrehi, that there was an uncertainty in their words. The suffek the debrehi lachakim, and when we have a, a doubt in the words of the rabbis, we go towards a leniency, okay? namely, velikne shavita ba'avim. So let us say that the rainwater acquired a Sabbath residence in the clouds. You should me, okay? If that's the case, okay, what happens, right? Then we should derive and come to a conclusion of the following. The ain't chumim the malame asara, that there are no limits, no tvachim above a height of 10 tvachim. The iyesh chumim, because if there were boundaries, they would acquire their Sabbath residence in the clouds. But all along I will say to you that the laws of Chumim, the boundaries, are applicable. They do exist. And the water, okay, is absorbed in the clouds. Right? Get a little weather education here today. Koshakane, as we'll just go over a tiny bit. Okay? But there's an objection. Koshakane, the Havale Nolan, the Asiri. But if that's the case, when that rainwater comes down from the clouds on Yom Tov, okay, it's no lad, it's brand new. And it was not, was not available, and therefore it should be forbidden. Right? But water in the clouds, the clouds moves around. It's constantly in motion. Okay? Hashta the atit lahaki. So the Gemara, now that you've come to that conclusion, so to speak, to that idea, Okeanus nami lo likshula. Okay, then the issue of the ocean also should not be problematic for you. Maya ba okeanus nami enad naide. The water in the ocean also is constantly in motion. Okay, ocean and motion, right? And that's where we're going to stop right here because the Gemara then tries to uh, okay, then give another example, all right? And we'll see whether that is going to work or not. So that's where we'll pick up tomorrow. Okay. Okay, guys, have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. And everybody you. stay well. Very close to this time. Crazy. Yes. Yes. No. 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 Morning, Ted. <laughs> How you doing?
Heard you had an interesting meeting the other day. <laughs> yesterday. Yeah, oh, was it yesterday? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Well, we have one today. We'll see what's happening. <laughs> have a good day. You too. Yeah, too. Yeah. Bob, are you still here? How about now? You hear me now? Now I hear you, yeah. Yeah. Okay. For a while, there was a lot of echoing going on right at the start. No, I know. I got rid of it. I know what okay. to do. That was you. Okay. Okay. How is, this sounds all right now. Yeah, yeah, it sounds excellent now, yeah. Oh, excellent. Great. Not just, a problem. Okay. So, okay. Reference to your initial uh, in, uh, inquiry, uh, spoken to uh, the powers that be, and I found out what the procedure is. It is not at the board level, it is at the building level. And her service has nothing to do with it, and either does the board. It's at the building level. There is a procedure set. So you'd have to go individually, each building would have to vote. Yeah, so somebody will have to uh, explain that. Well, I know. I have to say he's out of order. That's it. Oh, yeah, but I, think, I think you should. Yeah, no one can make a motion. Just to let you know, I just found that out. No matter what it, what the motion would be, I don't know. It seems like it's such a crazy rules. I swear. Uh, well, I'll just leave it at uh, point. Years, this years ago, uh, Schuchman said said we should have revised the. Uh, documentation because it's oh. so confusing now yeah okay what is that that's perfect oh. what is that someone else wants to get on or i don't know no, that, that was my my uh son oh. called me that's all i just put him on hold i put him on hold man. because mm -hmm. i'm reading stuff and it says uh that this if there is still a director in place uh put in place by by the owner <laughs> that's, that's, okay. that's ancient, you know, but uh, I was trying to read some parts of it. But that's interesting. Yeah, that if, if it has to be done by the building, taking a vote, yeah. it has nothing to do with this meeting. Correct. Uh, does Angie know that? That's what Angie told me. Okay. <laughs> okay. And she'll have to explain she, that somehow. Yeah. I'll, I'll ask her to explain the, the rules, you know. If, we, if, if they get to get that far, yeah. Mm, well, maybe they do, maybe they won't, I don't know. Okay, okay, and uh, I understand fully the uh, priorities involved here, okay? Well, I gotta get, I gotta, did you get a copy of the budget? No. No, that's no. what I just, I told Angie I didn't get my copy. I don't know where she got it. Yeah, so this is, you know, and, and we can't even go around handing it out and having the directors look at it. No, because I didn't get it either. I'm going to call her back and tell her we never got it. Yeah. Unless she unless, wants to tell her right now. Okay. Unless she want again, unless she wants the board to come to her conference room. Yeah. That might be a way of working and everybody else can be in wherever they are. No, it's not going to happen now. I know that. All right, let me call her. Tell her no. She said I sent it to you. I said I didn't get it. She says I sent it to everyone. I said no. Oh. Oh. Well, someone didn't. Someone failed. Whoever you gave it to, the end. Let okay, me call. Let me, let me yeah. Get a quick, quick breakfast. Okay. Bye bye. See bye. you later. Talk to you later. Good. No one got the budget. <laughs>